you know, it's so hard to get to get in touch with people who are actively doing something in the community and fighting for Christian values beyond the church who are on the front lines, so to speak. And we have one of those gentlemen with us joining us on the phone right now is uh, Pat Fitzpatrick, who is headmaster of Plumstead Christian School. Pat, how you doing this morning? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Hey, I understand that you also just had Stephen Curtis Chapman uh, at this event that you got actually got a chance to interview him. Uh, great guy. Love Stephen Curtis Chapman. Um, but he just did your local founders event not too long ago. That's right. Uh, Saturday, actually, he and Mary Beth Chapman came. Uh, we wanted the, the couple to come because, uh, you know, we love their story. Uh, we, we, of course, love his music, too. But when we pick founders forum speakers, we're looking for uh, nationally recognized speakers who put, uh, who put feet to their faith, you know, who's, where their Christian faith is obviously uh, informing the way they live. And uh, Mary Beth's uh, best-selling uh, story is an amazing uh, story. And so the, the two of them came, and it was quite the package. Absolutely, and I remember talking to talking to Stephen. That was one of the big things he was talking. I, you know, I've also got on air with me right now. I've got Al Locke, uh, owner of the station, uh, who wanted to go ahead and ask you something too. Well, I just wanted to say that uh, I attended the event over the weekend, and uh, you're absolutely right, Pat. It was uh, quite an experience to hear Stephen and his wife uh, talk about the events in their lives and uh, how the devastating event of the death of their little girl uh, was overcomable by their faith and how, uh, in my mind, uh, it resulted in their renewed commitment to Christ and how they started uh, an orphanage in China, more or less in memory, where more or less a children that couldn't be adopted in China because of birth defects or physical liabilities were able to be operated on with the help of their foundation and basically given hope. And this was a, a monumentally uh, test, good testimony. And beyond that, uh, the Plumstead Christian School, which uh, is is just phenomenal. The the young people were on display there. It's a K through eight school that you're the headmaster of. Actually, sent a uh, a delegation of students over there and how they were affected, how they rose raised money, and how they gave a, a substantial check. Uh, so, God bless you for your work in uh, one of the top fifty schools in the nation. Uh, unless you see it as I did, my wife and I, uh, it's hard to. Uh, hard to realize the, the gem and the uh, presence that your school uh, gives us in, in Soderton and in, the, in this area. God bless you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually, uh, uh, if I can correct one thing, it's a, a age three preschool through 12th grade school. So we, we go almost from the cradle to uh, getting them ready for college, which is really exciting. Uh, but as you mentioned, uh, the, the, there was a group that went over to China, uh, and uh, we do that. We, we do trips like that during our M term uh, in March when our seniors are in the Dominican Republic serving uh, Christ there. Our juniors are on a, a tour of the uh, country's colleges. Uh, the sixth grade through tenth grade have a unique curriculum. And one of those things that we offer is trips. And it was just, it was an amazing trip. It was educational, but we had to fit in uh, the Maria's Big House of Hope, which, as you mentioned, is the, uh, the it's a, a medical care unit. Uh, it's actually situated right next to an orphanage in Laoyang, China. And uh, as you mentioned, it takes the, the, the least of these. Uh, and it was, a, it was a blessing to be there. I went with the with the students and uh, something that wasn't expressed at the uh, during the presentation when the students came up to give the 
the oversized check to the Chapmans uh, for Maria's Big House of Hope is that these kids uh, handmade Chinese dumplings uh, and put them on sale at our school. And so really the whole school, you know, by buying these dumplings and kind of they entered into this, this uh, joy of giving money away to uh, Maria's Big House of Hope. And it, and it kind of underscores one of the key points in our mission. Our mission is to uh, provide a caring environment where students are taught to think biblically, serve effectively, and lead Christ-centered lives. And, and you know, those kids, uh, you know, and, and what they did for, for the Chapmans and for, for the Show Hope ministry was a testament uh, of our mission being fulfilled. It certainly was. Uh, <clears throat> my wife just texted me. She said, uh, please mention how impressive your students were, the mm-hmm. choirs and the orchestra and the videos were. She's a, a graduate music major, and uh, basically she should know. And uh, one of her favorite musicians, of course, is Stephen Curtis Chapman. And uh, it was a real privilege to get to see hear, uh Steve and his wife there. Uh, it was I, once again the Plumstead Christian School, uh, and I'm sure people like me didn't know uh, know about it until very recently. It's really a, a treasure in our community, and uh, we wish you well. And uh, anything we can do to help publicize your mission, because from what I've seen, it's Christ's mission. So. Please, uh, please let us help you in in any way we can, because you really are doing the Lord's work here on earth. Thank you, and and thank you for the kind words from your wife. Uh, music is one of our strengths, uh, the performing arts, the visual arts. Uh, when we were selected as one of the top fifty Christian high schools in the country, uh, one of the things that really grabbed their attention was the richness of our co-curricular offerings. And uh, so, you know, I, I do welcome anyone who's interested in checking out our school to come by and, and uh, get a tour and, and check out our website and read all about our school and look for next year's Founders Forum. You know, we've had stellar speakers, uh, including the Chapmans. We started with Sarah Palin five years ago, George W. Bush, Tim Tebow, Dr. Carson last year, and this year the Chapmans, and uh, we're already gearing up for next year, although I can't share with you who we're thinking about yet. (laughs) God bless you. That's a lineup of just about all my favorite people that you just mentioned. So uh, you, uh, like I said, it's uh, really a privilege to to know that uh, your school exists, and uh, we'd like to uh, wish you well and... and, uh, Pray that the Lord blesses your ministry even more. Well, we've uh, we've got joining us right now on the phone Pat Fitzpatrick. This is Mike Levins, by the way, uh, headmaster. I'm not headmaster. He's headmaster of Plumstead <laughs> Christian School. Uh, joining us on the phone right now. I can't even begin to talk about how important it is for Christian schools to be doing what they are doing, teaching our children. That's the next generation, and teaching them the truth, not shying away from the tough questions. You know, there's a question a professor in university told me, and uh, or not a question, a statement. He said, the truth is never afraid of the question. And find that a lot of people, sometimes politicians, are, uh, are afraid of the question today. Uh, how about you, Pat? Are you afraid of the question? <laughs> Absolutely not. We need to be teaching the truth. One of the hallmarks of our school, I would say, as the kids get into the high school, especially middle school a little bit, and then high school especially, is that we, we are leading them to the truth. And I, I want to make that distinction because it would be very easy for a, a Christian school to, to you know, tell kids what they are supposed to believe, whether it's in politics or, or theology. And it's so much more of an impact on the students to see the the teachers modeling Christ-like behavior and encouraging a real, genuine search for the truth. And that's what them. the schools are stereotyped as, though. They're stereotyped as you're, you are not guiding them. You are imposing. You are indoctrinating them. That's what you're stereotyped as. Oh, that's absolutely. We're, 
we're fighting against that, and I'm not saying that uh, all Christian schools take the stance that we do. I think as I share this with other Christian school leaders, though, it definitely resonates with them as well. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one specific anecdote. I had my own twins graduated from here two years ago. They had, for those three years, uh, a gentleman and a scholar for a history class who taught them advanced placement U.S. history, advanced placement European history, and then U.S. government and comparative government. And one of my boys is now studying political science. So what this man taught them, you know, really resonated with them, got them engaged, excited. And I asked my political science major, what political persuasion would you say your teacher was? And he said, I have no idea. In other words, he never used the classroom, although he had ample opportunity, never used the classroom as a soapbox or a platform pushing his own political agenda. He, he wanted the kids to engage, to wrestle with topics. He led them to the truth on issues, but he never once shared with them what he was, which I thought was really interesting because as students, you look up to your teachers, you, you find out what your teacher believes. Oftentimes, the student will just say, oh, you know, he's smart, he, he's done... He's done all this research. I'll just believe what he believes. And then it's not their own. Isn't it ironic that public universities are the ones who are now being known for the indoctrination and how Christian schools are standing against that? Remarkable yeah. story, because you're right. That, that gentleman had time and time again to be able to indoctrinate, you right. could say. And he did. Yeah, and you know, knowing that a lot of the universities, whether they're public or private, out there are sometimes falling into that mistake of indoctrination, whether it's into secular humanism or, or other angles, evolution, whatever. We do see part of our job as they approach graduation to prepare them for that. You know, a lot of our kids, probably 50% of our kids go on to Christian schools, liberal art, Christian liberal arts schools, but the other 50% are heading into public schools, private schools all over the country. And we want them to be ready, not to be necessarily combative unless it calls for that. We take the approach, as Scripture says, to be gentle as doves, but as wise as serpents. <laughs> uh -huh. So helping them to discern, helping them to win the hearts of, of their peers and even their professors to stand firm in the faith. Well, Pat, aren't you guys, aren't you guys like one of the top Christian schools in the nation? Well, according to one poll... The bestschools.org this year, we were rated top 50 best uh, Christian high schools in the country. And, you know, that was, that was based on a number of criteria, strength of academic program, the demographic and socioeconomic diversity, the richness of our co-curricular activities. Yeah, you want to talk about, uh, you want to talk about indoctrination to get a rating like that, um, <laughs> and to have one of the best high schools, you, 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 in order to provide an atmosphere that fosters that diversity, uh, great for you, Pat. It's been wonderful to have you on the air. We're, we're just wrapping up our time here. Um, Pat? Website and phone number. Go. Uh, website is www.plumsteadchristian.org, and you can call us at 215-766-8073. All right. Well, Pat, thanks for joining us on the air.